Verse 13, was Paul crucified for you? You know, you're going to go as far as to lift up. And, you know, he's talking about himself. Like, was I crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? And then, and then he goes on to say, like, like, I thank God that I didn't do a lot of baptizing because I don't want anyone thinking that I came in, you know, basically preaching myself and lifting myself up and trying to get followers after me. One of the things that we see here, though, is that obviously there, are, there were influences within the church of these other apostles within that church. So there were these great leaders, and the believers in the church at Corinth were obviously listening to and, and kind of getting guidance from and leadership from these other great men of God. And, you know, that's fine and great, but the problem is that the people there were carnal and we're putting too much stock into these men as opposed to just being able to receive teaching from various men of God, various people who are able to give instruction and teaching and leave it at that and not become part of a clique and not just, you know, be so focused around one person. Now turn, if you would, back to chapter 3, because chapter 3 goes into this a little bit more detailed. Between chapter 3 and 4, we get a lot more information kind of about what's going on with, uh, with this subject. And this is an important subject, okay? And, and, you know, the fact that they're all great leaders is really important also to understand. It's easy for us to see when someone, when people are, are, are following some false prophet, you know, hey, call that out, right? We don't, we don't need to be... Um, you know, so many people, unfortunately, get caught up in cults of personality and, and just lift up and exalt. Oh, man, this person, it's like they're the second coming of Jesus Christ or whatever. But just as much as that's easy to spot or seems easier to spot, and we need to stay away from that, even when you have really good men of God, you, can, you, you have that potential for people to start following in that same way and exalting people above where they ought to be exalted. Now, great men of God, like the Apostle Paul, like Peter, they ought to be respected, right? They, they ought to be people that you could look to for guidance and look to for leadership and, and someone that you can respect their opinion and, and, and treat them as, you know, as a father, as an elder. But they're still a man. And you have to remember that and especially, you know, the Apostle Paul was someone who's greatly used more than any other as far as, you know, receiving all of this great scripture, being used mightily of God, making all these travels, winning so many people to Christ. You can see how it can start to be easy where people just any word that comes out of the Apostle Paul's mouth, man, I'm just going to believe what he says because he's doing all this great thing. It's like, hold on a minute there. You need to take a step back and not just blindly follow and become a follower where you're just saying, I am Paul's disciple. Because you've got, you've got your priorities mixed up. You ought to be, I am Christ's disciple. And these men are going to help me, right? These men, God has put in positions to, to help me to grow, to learn more. But you know what they're going to help me to teach? To follow Christ. John the Baptist knew this real well. He wasn't trying to imagine, because he, he did get a lot of followers. He got a lot of disciples following John. He started baptizing people. He had a lot of people following his ministry. He made a big stir. He made a big commotion. There's a lot of people talking about his ministry, and a lot of people joined to his ministry. But you know what he did? He says, hey, it's not about me. Follow him. Hey, behold the Lamb of God. Hey, that's who you need to be following. Follow Jesus. I'll help you follow. Yeah, there he is. Go, follow him. He must increase, I must decrease. That was, that was the message of John the Baptist. And you know what? That's the same heart and attitude that the apostles had too. It's not the apostles' fault. It's not Peter's fault. It's not Paul's fault that people are trying to lift them up and exalt them. They're just preaching the word of God with power, with the Holy Ghost. They're doing what's right. They're getting a lot of success. They're doing a lot of great works for God. It's the people that are, that are being carnal and, and choosing to exalt someone. So first of all, we can't blame Paul. We can't blame Peter because other people are doing this stuff. It's not their fault. 